So I want to welcome everyone to our ZIMMAC um, Thursday 30 session and I'm thrilled to have two of our two parents um, on the call this afternoon. So welcome to Bob Zagu and to Anjana Babel. So thank you both very much for offering to do this webinar. Um, we did do a session at our event Communication Works which was one of the sessions that um, we got really positive feedback, a lot of amazing positive feedback afterwards saying how everyone found it really, really valuable. So we thought it would be worth us doing this session this afternoon. So thank you both um, very much. So I just wondered if maybe I could um, just go to Bob to start off with, just to give a very brief introduction of who you are, who your child is and what technology they're using. Sure. Uh, so my name is Bob Sagu. I am um, I live up in Nottingham uh, in the East Midlands. Um, uh, my day job is I work in assistive technology for for a, 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 a manufacturer, uh, but my main sort of like uh, um, role, I would say, is 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 a parent and facilitator is the best way to describe myself for my. As um, cerebral palsy, he is nonverbal and requires uh, 24, 24 hour, 24 hour. 24 7 i should say a postural support and management um which uh accesses uh, um um a communication device uh, via eye gaze and he's been using that since the age of five he is now 17 and he's gone mainstream in regards to his education with support and uh, he's a very opinionated 17 year old i'm not sure where he gets it from though i've been told it's me <laughs> and uh, but um he he he's you know he's found his voice in you no know, pun intended and he uh, presents at conferences at cm the communication matters conference he's presented there and uh, he's hoping to set up his own blog uh, at some point next year so he's very um very outgoing very articulate and um doesn't let the, the issues that he has from a physicality perspective, something from from doing what he wants to do and pursuing you know, the things that he wants to do in, in life. So uh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's great. Yeah, and yeah. um, can you just tell us what app he's using or what grid set he uses? Sure, yeah, so he's using grid three at the moment and it is, uh, I'm trying to think which it's, if it's, uh, Oh gosh, I'm trying to think which, which grid it is because I'm sure people who use grid three know uh, when you fire up your device, it takes you straight into the grid set that he uses or they use, as it were. So I'm trying to recall what it is, but it's more text based rather than I think it's fast talk he's using. But mm -hmm. what's really exciting for us now is that is now I've let him loose on social media. So he's using WhatsApp, he's using Instagram oh, and lovely. connecting and interacting with, you know, the, the the wider world in that respect. So it brings a sense of, 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 of um, you know, not concerns, but things that we need to make maintain and keep on top of but it gives him that much more freedom to express himself so uh my whatsapp with him uh you know between us is, is quite funny and uh but no he, he's he's really you know taking on um you know his next step as far as, far as his ASC journey in, in a big way lovely oh thanks so Anjana could you just introduce yourself and um who your child is and what they're using yeah um, so hi, I'm Anjana Babel. Um, my daughter is, is again 17 year old. Um, she go, attends a special needs school, Charlton Park Academy. Um, she has, uh, she's completely non-verbal. Um, she has cere mild cerebral palsy, but she um, is mobile. Um, she has learning disabilities and she's also on the uh, autism spectrum. So for her, a lot of things in her day are very routine. Um, she's limited in 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 terms of um, initiating conversations. Um, she's into very set routine patterns, and that causes a lot of anxiety if there are changes in pattern. Um, this thing. And her um, she has limited uh, signing, and they are very uh, approximate signing. So for her communicating with people who are who don't know what those particular signs mean is a challenge. And um, her communication tends to be very contextual if she's not using her ACK. Um, she started using ACK about six years ago. Um, started with Proloque um, and um, um, she graduated then to grid, um, grid three. 
She has been using Symbol Talker C, Symbol Talker D, and now we are trying to get her onto Core, Super Core 50 because her literacy skills have just exploded in the last five years. Yeah, that's my oh. new choice, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so I think one of the we've got a set of questions um, here that we've put together. These are quite often questions that we get when we're out working um, with people we we get from parents particularly. Um, I wondered, I know there's um, uh, some other people on the call. If you've got um, questions that you'd like to add, please put them in the chat and then we can hopefully try um, and catch a few at the end. Um, but the first question I know, Bob, you were going to answer. And sure. um, that is, um, what would you say to parents and carers who you think, who think um, power-based AAC will stop their child from talking? Um, I think for me, it's um, the actual physical act of vocalising, as it were, as it were, uh, be something that we are going going back to to our to my personal experience. It's something we've ran alongside. Uh, you know, power-based AAC solution, and it's worked in conjunction with, with, with that. But I've also found that using a, a power-based AAC, or in this particular case, an IGA system, um, has actually helped uh, bring the vocalization process with, with, with the this particular situation. He has not got a learning disability, and it's just purely the, the physical aspect with regards to not be able to, be, to, to vocalize. So, being able to sort of effectively have a do both and work on both is really really helped and so they've complemented each other is the best way I can I can put it. so I think there's space for both I think think you can um, you know if it's done in the right way and I I know the team at, at uh, Charlton Park as I know a lot of therapists that they 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 look at um, I don't like to say use the word low tech but they look at um, alternative solutions in regards to communication that aren't tech based or power based. And they work the, the two together. So, for example, with she has really, he's really good at vocalizing certain aspects. He's starting to say, uh, "Dad and Mum," uh, and it's you know, this is something we didn't really think we'd, we'd see. But that's come on working alongside the power base solutions with just just phonics, just repeating things to him and giving him the time and space to sort of like to 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 to, to vocalize. But I think with 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 I, I can't generalize because every child is and every situation is different but with my experience has been it's not a detriment of 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 um you know um him being able to vocalize on his own he's he's been he's done that he's from babbling to to, to where we are now he's you know the words are coming through clearly and here's a really odd thing they come through with an accent so he's got a nottingham accent i hear it sometimes as well so yeah. it's like really sort of like cool to say and, and we work on things and mm. if we if i hear a sound that sounds like a sound i will stop and i'll say and we'll, we'll okay um is this what you meant and if he says mm. yes this is okay let's let's try and sound that word out again and you know if you catch these odd words i would just say you know um um recognize that because recognition for that is great because that individual then feels ah. Oh, You've, you've said something and you know what I've you've understood what I've said and that is incredibly empowering and then mm. just, just build on that build on that but mm. I think with regards to his vocalization using power-based AT alongside has really sort of helped him just mm. express himself you know yeah. and, and be able to sort of uh, um, uh, to, to get his point across to get his words out to get his communication out in that respect so I, I you know again I, my situation is it's my situation or our situation is our situation but i found it to be you know they complement each other complimentary yeah brilliant yeah. Oh, thank you um so and jana um the next question what would you say to others who say um they don't need power-based aac at home because they understand their child yeah um obviously parents uh, and carers know their child the best and it's like a baby you know when children are small you understand it but the few things, uh, one is your child is not going to be limited to you. As they grow, they have to interact with other children. They have to interact with other adults. You want them to be as independent and you want them to have a wider circle of people whom they can interact with. And it's you can't control their environment all the time. Like they will be carers and adults who know or children who know them and know their signs or know their gestures. 
And so to be able, at least for um, a case, uh, for her to be understood by other adults, she definitely needed a communication uh, technique which was more generalized, which was more uh, mainstream, and that's English, and that's, you know, um, um, an act. So this has particularly widened her horizons immensely. Until five years ago, it was, I, I could just count the number of adults who probably understood her, probably school, uh, five teachers at home, both of us, even when she went to meet the family in India, no one would, could understand her unless we were interpreting, interpreting for her. But now she has the vocabulary. It is limited. Communication is rigid, but still people can ask her and she answers and she can comment on things. The other thing I have found with ACT is not even for me, understanding her is limited to what she can sign and um, what she can probably her facial expressions and things like that. But more complex um, emotions, more complex comments have come through ACK. So I'll just give, give you an example. For example, I, I was telling her a schedule for a day and I have to prepare her always. I'm, I'm going to do this and then this and then this. And things happened and I changed it. And then things happened again. I changed it and said, and she was sitting there staring and I said, are you all right? And she goes on her act and types confused. Mm. So how beautiful was that? That was the mm. first time I realized she understood the word confused and there was no way I could have understood that that's what she meant. So it's mm. those complex and then there are colors to the communication. So I can understand her only when I'm looking to her, looking at her or, she, you know, facing her. She's talking to me. I, she has my attention. But now with her act, she's part of our household or she's part of an environment where she can just comment. I'm in the kitchen and I cough and I will hear a comment. Mommy, you coughed. Are you OK? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and she's mm. her brother's around and he's being naughty and she she will just sit there, say, and say, is smiling. So I know something is yeah. happening, start chatting to someone. So she, it's, it's become more normal kind of communication. So yes, you understand your child, but it's these colors to the communications, you know, which can come. Things like she has used, if I tell her a plan, one day I will do this and this and this, and she was repeating because she's, on autism spectrum and she has to repeat. So she repeated, we are going to do this and this and this on the act. And then she added, sounds like a plan from the focus. <laughs> nice, yeah. How beautiful is that? Because yeah. that adds so much color to her communication. Mm. It just, and when she says that to people who don't know her or, you know, uh, to friends who know her but don't understand her, it's just gives so, so much color to her personality, you know, so. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Thank that's you. Um, Bob, would you have anything to add to that? Um, I, I think you really covered it uh, as such. It's, it's you know, um, how your child or how Hart is now, not our child anymore, is you know, as a young adult, as it were, how he's, um, how he communicates without other people that are without outside of your circle or something that we've been obviously really careful of and it and it you know it's if you draw analogies you look at people that don't speak english in the house or speak down language in the house and they speak something else outside and learning that language and learning how to communicate with individuals outside of your group so mm -hmm. we've always been you know had that in mind to to, to make sure that his communication was, it was as straightforward as possible and um he's a very expressive he's a very outgoing um uh, young adult and um but like you said there are certain areas where he's going to be you know in a new environment meeting new people and you know it could be that he'll be using his eye gaze and he'll be using that to communicate but there are aspects where he he won't be where we would be just saying look here's his level of understanding he'll indicate to you by these eye movements whether he understands or or, or or not or and often just knowing what is yes and which is no is a grounding to start a conversation as it were and mm -hmm. 
So we'd be quite fortunate in the sense of he's incredibly expressive. So he uses body language, he uses facial expression, he uses gestures, he uses tone as well to sort of like to, to, to communicate. So it's not just a one aspect of spoken communication, whether it's his eye gaze or or likewise. It's there's a number of different, different things where it's used to be subtlety that you'd pick up on. Now it's it's he's he's learnt, okay, I know how to communicate and what avenues I can utilize to sort of, to get my point across, as it were. So um yeah, it's. I echo what you've said. It's 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 very much a case of you, uh, um, of 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 preparing your 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 then child, the young adult, to make sure that they are confident and they have the ability to communicate in areas where they don't know anybody and and they are it is new to them as it were. So uh, yeah. So leading on for there, has there been anything that surprised you about using power based AAC at home? Um. It surprised me in a in a in a in a in a in a funny way in the sense of like my my son was well, so hard, so hard she's um her, he he likes to experiment now with um uh he's controlling his environment but also control the other aspects of the environment that he's not necessarily in so he uh, once I had that uh, adapt to the house uh, he takes great pleasure in changing the temperature in the shower when I'm having a shower. <laughs> And I can hear him laughing when I did so. I, the, where the tone hits on the shower, that is the temperature dropping. Now I can jump out of the way, but before it's like, what's happening? And I get a blast of cold water, and I can hear him laughing downstairs. Um, but as far as uh, yeah, and the, the just just the ability to to interact with his environment, like switching the TVs on and off, and and so forth. But I think the real big difference I've noticed now over the last few years is. Um, there was always an element of fatigue with eye gaze in the sense of you, you use it for a few hours. And it's if you're very, if anybody's ever tried it, or if you haven't, I really do recommend it because you'll you'll get an idea of how taxing it is, not just mentally and physically, but it, it, it's it's incredibly draining, as it were. And mm. subtleties of movement, you don't realize how much you take in in your peripheral, and that's picked up by the eye gaze sensor. So he is now wanting to use his device more and more because there is more and more he can do with it and not just control the environment but more with regards to um social media aspect he 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 uses i guess to 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 access gaming console gaming he uses his device to just to 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 uh to do his his college work as it were so it's more it's it's beyond more than an aac device it is now a lifestyle device and it, it it really does support him in a row, and he is it's it's an extension of him, and yeah, even to the point where now he um he understands that the speaker is slightly detached detached because people then talk to his device rather than him. So what we we're, we're testing at the moment is a, a Bluetooth speaker that he wears on a, a lanyard, so the voice emanates from him. So it's something that he said. I, I, I it's two things he's always said to me. People don't tend to look at me or talk to me. They talk to my device. So we looked at ways and means of trying to address that, and and he was took the lead on that. And he he said, look, if a speaker is on me, then they know the voice is coming from me. And and as he's grown, we've got more age appropriate sort of voices, as it were. So it's he's really identified with his device. He it's an extension of him. And um, heaven forbid everything happens with it, he gets quite upset and rightly so because he says that's his primary um, mm -hmm. sort of uh, um, option for, for for his communication, as it were. So it's it's he's accessing it a lot more in every right, different yeah. sort of facet, as it were. So yeah, it's what well, I've seen that in the last few years has is really sort of come on mm. in, in leaps and bounds. Oh, fantastic. Um, and Jana, is there anything that surprised you about using? An AAC yeah. device. Yes, so um, for us, few things. Um, the voice um, that emanates from Ad has now become voice. So I hear that, and it is like it is her voice. I can't imagine that voice to be someone else's voice. You know, so um, it has given her so much of a personality you know the way it speaks you know the intonation of it, it it's it's her so that's so her presence is felt in the in the house much more even if i'm not interacting with her yeah. and it has um initially i had to encourage her to use quite a lot 
So I had to make it available all the time in the car, car back seat. But it has come to now a point, and that is the surprising. She's so dependent on it that she will remind me that we have forgotten to take it along, that it needs to put it for charging. I want this. You know, so is it for charging? If I forget to charge it, she'll go and check twice that it is on charging because, you know, so it it is it is really surprising for me how much she's become dependent on it and how much of her circle is expanded because of it, you know. So yeah, it is. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, it's so nice, you know, um, you sharing all of this. It's really, really positive. Um, I, I, I wish you'd have a chat with my son about uh, the voice because he keeps changing his, which oh. is great. But when it's, he, he has this habit of changing it, he can get all into the, he, he loves to go into the settings. So uh, uh, he likes to change it to the voice of the queen is one of his most popular ones at the moment, <laughs> which you can imagine is slightly unnerving when I hear this really posh voice in the house, like, who's in the house? But, oh, uh, but, but isn't yeah, that but... wonderful because it's his personality, yeah. isn't it? The yes. sense of fun. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next question has, um, is about, have you noticed an impact on your child's literacy skills using AAC? Um, so maybe Bob, if you... Um, yes, because he's he's accessing it a lot more, and he's accessing not just primarily for communication, but for his for his work. And uh, so he's at college; uh, he's going to a mainstream college uh, uh, as well. And um, um, yes, absolutely, I've seen his literacy. I mean, he's done. Um, he's sort of uh, he's as I say he went through a mainstream education, um, did really well on his exams. Um, but I see his his just his literacy. He's um, not so much. Absolutely, he, what he's what he's work, his work on his eye gaze on his computer. But when he's following things like the news, and, and, and so I, I can see that he's taking everything in, everything on board, and he's listening so intensively. So he's he's following the stories. He's known about Ukraine, and we've talked about you know, issues that are going off in the world. And I think that's really you know his his power base AAC has really helped him develop that the element of his literacy and. Just his all round sort of, you know, knowledge and awareness is is really as he's at that age, uh, and we're both in the same position with our kids being, you know, young adults. He keeps reminding me to stop saying kids, but oh, yeah. um, being the age that they are, they're, we're in a similar sort of trajectory where they are maturing physically in that respect, but their awareness is is really coming on. So I've noticed, as I'm sure you have, that it, 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 in the last few years, there's been a real big upsurge in, in, in his ability to uh, a, access his device, but just to interact and, and do so much more. He he flits from different grid sets, for example. He knows, OK, if I'm not feeling too particularly on it, I can go to sort of like a, a picture-based grid set, and that's going to help me. Great. Oh, his WhatsApps yeah. are brilliant because he loves to use emojis, and emojis are a great way for him to to sort of communicate. So, um, yeah, I just see all these little subtlety, subtleties and nuances coming through. And um, so it lit it's all aspect, not just literacy. It's 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 the whole remit is really sort of like come on and and, and leaps and bounds. Yeah, thanks. What about um, Anjana? What about because I know yeah. as I, as I said in the beginning, for me since I started using ACK, the literacy skills have just exploded. Her vocabulary has exploded. Her sentence cream. Uh, creation has exploded. So, for example, five years ago, it was the first time she had started recognizing letters and symbols. And um, five years ago, she was probably answering one word answers to things, you know, where do you want to go? Park. And now she can create the whole sentence. Sometimes you have to remind her, but I want to go to the park. So okay. it's the whole SVO kind of sentence, you know, what you say, subject, verb, or object, um, things like that. I'll give you an example. Um, because of our anxiety, if we go on a trip, we create a social story. I would write a script, send it to school, and they would send me a symbol-based written thing. So she could read and read and read and read over, and we would work on it. But we had a last minute trip, and I didn't have the social story. It didn't matter. She typed out the entire thing on ACK and I helped it save it as my news. 
and there it went. But she even didn't, she could create about 10 sentences, the whole story and keep on repeating the, in the whole car journey for herself. And that's where, I mean, I, I feel that's, that's mm. just amazing. And it's the predictive nature as well, having all those folders ready. So she just sits there and goes into transport and she will, you know, select mm. everything to just see how it sounds, emotions she'll go to. Even if she doesn't understand, it's just getting exposed to that kind of vocabulary. And mm. then she starts creating sentences. There's a predictive thing, you know, she can't spell something. There's a predictive thing. So because she she's not good with spelling, but and mm. she's able to communicate and she's mm. started using tenses because she's because she's hearing us say that mm. she thinks this is not right so she'll go and change the tense yeah amazing yeah, yeah. i mean i i know here so i just think it is fantastic her yeah. progress yeah um I knew this was going to happen. We're fast running out of time. We could have yeah. had a much longer <laughs> session. I just wondered, maybe, could you both um, uh, end on these final two questions? Um, what's the best bit of training or support you've received? And do you have a top tip for parents? So maybe, Bob, if you wanted to say. I will be as quick as I can. Um, so, uh, Sorry, what was the first question? I know the so the best th training or support that you've had, the kind of key thing that's really been helpful and a top okay. tip. Okay, best source of information, best um, advice is other parents. That has been, you know, I, I would strongly urge you talking with the parents and you know interact with them, ask the questions of like what works for you, what 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 how do you, how does your child. You know, school runs at special school. You see everybody there waiting. Just, just, just talk and and, mm. and be open. So, like, if you're if you're if you're struggling or you want some information, the parents are great and they will give you the time because they're in the same boat as you. And mm. uh, I've done that myself. Uh, top tip, crikey, um, there's quite a few. I just <laughs> think it's just sort of like um, almost like going for the flow. I, 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 I you know, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll give you a little exclusive. Um, with everything that's happened, I'm starting to work on a book, and the book is going to be called um, "He Leads, I Follow," and that's to a certain degree how I work with in the sense of he dictates a lot of things now, and I've just facilitated, you know, him to 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 have that ability and nurture that ability. So now it's it's just you know trust your instincts. You nobody knows your child better than you. In the, in the room, you're the experts and. You know, feel empowered that you know I can, I can, I can, I know my child. I think I know what will work for them. But in the, in, on the flip side, just take, be open to, to advice and appreciate the help and support that you know school give, therapists give, because they're all wanting to give you the best support and uh, you know and and uh, give you the as much support and help for you and and your child as it were. So yeah. Oh, that's really uh, useful because I think, you know, as um, for us meeting new families and often we work with individuals that might be in mainstream schools um, and they're the only person using uh, power-based AAC. And I think that's, you know, a good tip to actually put the parent in touch with some other parents who have yeah. been in that um, same position. So, yeah, thank you. Um, and Jana, did you want to finish on yeah. your sort of best training support? and? Yeah. I think for us, because um, iPad is um, act is very highly customized, so I think the, all the individuals who have worked with her over the years, in the last five years, have added to it and make um, added things that really motivate her. And I think that's the best um, support I've received uh, mm. because this is now her world. Uh, the top tip for other parents, I would say because my daughter wasn't motivated to use the app device to begin with, it was creating the opportunity and the motivation. So it's not like creating sentences, it's not her motivation. Her motivation was probably, um, you know, telling someone what she did in the evening beforehand on the weekend, possibly that, you know, so every child is different, but finding the right motivation um, and making your act device available all the time is the topic I have. 
Oh, I mean, that's brilliant too, because, you know, um, sometimes it's quite hard and difficult to, to um, for parents to see the potential and yeah, to creating those opportunities is, is so important. Um, thank you both so much. It's been um, brilliant half an hour, I feel, um, all your um, thoughts and ideas. Um, I don't know if anyone... Perhaps if people wanted to send in questions, we could pass them on and then post them um, somewhere. Uh, there's a, someone said, I would love to read that book. Wonderful. <laughs> um, I'll, get to, I'll get to it as soon as I can, Imogen. I will. I'll make sure you get a copy. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I don't know if anyone else had any comments or questions. I was just it, thinking oh. that it sounds like it would be good to have a parent support group, like an online parent support group or something like that, but we can probably talk about that later. So, um, yeah. There might yeah, already I, be. I have, I have actually sent an email to, um, I, last week I sent an email to Sarah to send on a message to all the parents, at least at Charlton, yeah. Yeah, um, to see idea. if they're interested. Mm. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I suppose even, even like a, just a WhatsApp group would be great mm. for yeah, that's right. to, yeah. to, to, to really get, get engagement going, as it were. Mm. Well, thank you both very much again. And thanks to everyone else who's on the call that's joined for the session. Um, yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks Take care. See you soon. Lots of thank you comments are coming in on the chat. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, I did mean, mean to mention before everyone left that Bob's actually running a session in a couple of weeks on the 23rd of November as part of the company you work for, Praetorian, on assistive gaming for all. So, um, yeah, pop that one in your calendar as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll slip you so I'll slip you the agreed amount that we said for 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 the plug later on. <laughs> the yeah. But yeah, please if you if you're going to join, that's that'd be great because I'll go through the whole remit of assistive gaming. It's really exciting and and it's uh, there's some really cool stuff that uh, is out there for for eye gaze users as well as you know individuals that just have either good gross or fine motor skills. It's it's a really interesting topic. It's a very hot topic and uh, it's great to be able to. To, to bring some solutions to everybody but I uh, so it's, today's been a real pleasure I, I I think that this is a great platform I really enjoyed it at communication matters uh work sorry and hopefully we'll do it works. again this year it was too. really we'll great yeah absolutely yeah. yeah yeah and I thank you very much thank you Kathleen yeah thank you. thanks good to see in, you again yeah we'll be in touch yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Thank see you guys you. take care thanks bye, bye. bye. Bye.